There was a theory that was put on by Leon Festinger. It deals with cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance theory leads to an exactly opposite prediction. What it believes is that there is a certain amount of stress that human beings can actually handle comfortably. And if you hold belief strongly, and if confronted with an opposite belief, you suffer debilitating stress this, uh, to the point that you cannot even function for some people. For him, there is dissonance. Time after time, we have seen what follows. You can live with the stress or you reform the narrative. What's really key to understanding Bin Laden and uh, dismissing a lot of conspiracies is knowing uh, Bin Laden's background. And I think that's one of the big things that people have a blocker for is they don't understand you know, where he came from, where his money comes from, and how intelligent he was to pull the things off that he did. So yeah, so his father had, he was one of 52 children. So, but imagine competing for a company with like 52 children. Like that's some, yeah, it's like a Game of Thrones level plot. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's interesting. And he was very he was young. Very He's very young too. How old was he at this point? Um, when the king died, he was 10 years old. Um, okay. I think he was 20, it was around 21 when he got radicalized in the seventies, but before he got radicalized while he was growing up is so the United States came in and they wanted Saudi Arabia's oil. And so they were able to establish this base and it, it couldn't fly a U.S. flag. And it was a very, very small presence. And they hired bin Laden's family who are all westernized they hired them to do the construction for this and that paved their fortune so a lot of his uh family went to college in the west he's the only member of his family who stayed in the middle east to go to college and his family was where they were quite secular um, his brother yeah. salim is the most noteworthy um salim went to college in, in britain and he, he looked like a member of the beatles like so Bin Laden, uh, Salim probably also slayed hella pus too, because like, <laughs> that's just what I've heard. And same with Bin Laden. And so Bin Laden would go party in Beirut and drink. Yeah. And, you know, it's really, it's not the Bin Laden you would think of how he was like raised like a little Mormon baby or something. You know, he's, he's quite wealthy and he partied it up. And this was all before he got radicalized or after yeah yeah so he he got radicalized in a period of like two months two months yeah it was very it was i'm generalizing it was very quick though um so how though was it self-radicalized or was someone else he was he was very intelligent he was reading some books about some guys who are precursors to the global jihad it is a moral indictment of america written in the 1950s the author, a man who found the country to be a spiritual wasteland. His name was Sayed Qutub. He inspired the likes of Osama bin Laden and his lieutenant, Ayman al-Zawahiri. Qutub's works laid the foundation for the modern jihad movement. It, he, he married a Syrian woman and she was very conservative and she might have also had an effect on his radicalization, but Either way, it really started around the same time as the Iranian Revolution, which really, really in inspired him. And then at the same time, that Iranian Revolution scared the shit out of the Soviets. So they feared a spread of Islam into Afghanistan, and they would go up through the Soviet states, who were all Muslim at the time. Yeah. So the Soviets went in, and they were like, we need to take control. So they went in, and uh, Operation 333, where they go in with basically special forces into the president's palace, who had just been poisoned. He wakes up when the special forces come into the palace, walks in in his underpants and says, what's going on? And they just kill him right there and take over. So, uh, so then the call, the call for jihad went out. They saw it as an assault on Islam itself. Was a Palestinian scholar, Sheikh Abdullah Zem, who had declared a ruling or fatwa while teaching in Saudi Arabia that urged all able Muslims to travel to Afghanistan and take up arms against the Soviets. 
So they all started do, meeting do you wanna, up in do you Pakistan. Explain what jihad is just quickly. Yeah. So um, I would say so when I when people hear the word jihad, they it kind of scares them, but I just simplify it to the struggle, which is what it means. It, it's a it's technically an Islamic struggle, but I if, I think it's no different than if somebody said this is my crusade. You know, it's really the same thing. But uh, a muhajideen, like the root word in there is jihad. And that's just somebody who who fights, you know, in a holy struggle. Uh, it's not a war it's specifically. It's the word is struggle. Many people in America, I noticed this. This is my first visit to USA. But I noticed that some people here uh, from ex lectures I had misunderstand the word mujahideen. They have bad information or bad understanding, or let's say misunderstanding to that word. They think Mujahideen are people who attack people, just, you know, or have hijacked planers, hijacked planes, aircrafts, like those who hijacked the Kuwaiti aircraft. We are against this completely. This is not jihad. This is nonsense. Jihad is fighting for the sake of Allah, fighting for the path of Allah to protect our religion. We make jihad against those who prevent us from performing our, you know, religion or from following our uh, divine revelation in Quran. Those who prevent us from performing our prayers like the Russians do. There's definitely a difference between a, a Muhajideen and a Jihadist. Yeah. So, um, and we, we see that in rolling out in Afghanistan where there's two separate trains of thought and it's the Jihadist and the Muhajideen mm -hmm. thought. And even inside the precursor to Al-Qaeda, there's kind of this thought where it divides them. We used to watch his film. You know that, that, that actor, uh, Sylvain? <laughs> and it was completely advertisement for the jihad of Afghanistan. Are the Mujahideen soldiers, holy warriors. Twice this war is a holy war. And there's no true death for the Mujahideen because we have taken our last rites. And we consider ourselves dead already. To us, death for our land and God is an honor. Also, so we should say that Bin Laden had a lot of family, and I think I think a lot of his uh, upbringing into um, radicalization in that yeah. short time. I think a lot of it was people wanted his money, and he was being exploited. And he was, you know, he was okay. like twenty-one. That's when you're in college and you're super radical, and you want to change the world. You know. Of course. So I think people saw his money, and that's really all they cared about. This new face appeared suddenly, and Sheikh Abdullah Azam introducing him to me, saying, this is uh, your brother in Islam, uh, Osama bin Laden. What I remember, this guy is very shy, uh, didn't talk too much. So the impression I got, good guy from Saudi, and that's goodbye. After that, I asked Sheikh Abdullah Azam, and he said he used to visit me every five, six months, trying to understand what is going on and bringing me some money. He ended up being a very key asset. Like, uh, people really respected him, and he, he did fight. He was wounded in a brutal battle against the Soviets, but that was pretty late. Mm. <clears throat> but the guy who founded it, he's, his Azim, he would say, um the only way forward is jihad no negotiations like only the rifle or something like that like no dialogues no negotiations only the rifle okay. and he was from palestine right so he wanted that, to yeah. he wanted to take the mission after afghanistan to go to palestine to fight israel and right. keep the global jihad as recruitment to come to one point bin mm -hmm. laden disagreed with him and saw Israel as a head on a hydra. If you cut it off, more heads will yeah. grow. People like to think that it was an attack on Christianity. Like conservatives love that shit. It was 100% an attack on the military industrial complex and capitalism. Yeah. Is mm. that you? Can, we can't look at somebody like Bin Laden and, and uphold Western values to him. We really need to, no. you know, understand like why people revered him and why he was why he was such a, you know controversial figure in the world yeah it's uh it's very interesting because it's not something you really hear that often because it's always 
you know, he did this, he's the worst person in the world, he attacked you. You know what I yeah. mean? Like that's that's how they always they always frame it, but they never like they never explain and they, they do it with any sort of extremist if you want to call them those. Till eighty eight, Osama bin Laden and Sheikh Abdullah Azam and all of us as a former of, uh, founders of services bureau, we work together. But something uh, Osama uh, split it himself to us in late 88 and he joined a group uh, called Jama'atul uh, Jihad, uh, Jihadi group, Egyptians. And they were there, the, some names uh, like Zawahiri, like uh, somebody called Sayyid Imam, uh, Abu Fadl, and uh, a, a group. They were not part of the jihad in Afghanistan. They were just part in Peshawar for their own agenda. No one knows because they were very minority. No one knows what they are go doing there. And they start working and then they joined uh, to Osama bin Laden. They became a group and later on they called what we know today uh, Al-Qaeda. You know, everyone knows, you know, Afghanistan beat the Soviets. There was some funding from the United States. Definitely didn't go to bin Laden. And I'm serious about that. Bin Laden would never touch American money. So the fact that he would be in leagues with America would never happen. If you understand the man, he hates America. Like he's so when he declared the jihad, he said, it's because you give money to Israel and they drop bombs on their children. You have declared a jihad against the United States. Can you tell us why? The U.S. government has committed acts that are extremely unjust, hideous, and criminal through its support of the Israeli occupation of Palestine. And we believe the U.S. is directly responsible for those killed in Palestine, Lebanon, and Iraq. Due to its subordination to the Jews, the arrogance of the United States regime has reached the point that they occupied Arabia, the holiest place of the Muslims, who are more than a billion people in the world today. For this and other acts of aggression and injustice, we have declared jihad against the U.S. So he already hated us for our money, but then mm. when Saddam mm -hmm. came, he went to Saudi Arabia and he said, let me go, let me lead the fight. And they were like, there's no caves, idiot. Like, get out of here. <laughs> and so he was like, they like pushed his face in the dirt and called him a loser and shit. Yeah. So, you know, it just kind of hurt him. It hurt his ego. He was like, wow, fuck you. But like, I mean, look at what happened. The Americans fought in insurgency warfare. Like, what, mm. what's the difference? Yeah. He, he yeah. would have totally been fine. We could have just yeah. let him fly there. But no, Dick Cheney came in with his fucking tanks <laughs> into Saudi Arabia and Kuwait, which really, really set like Bin Laden off. Oh, it would, wouldn't it? I mean, it's, it's all like your entire life. It's like... I mean, imagine imagine the vitriol if, if China landed in on the on the west, east coast of, of uh, America. Imagine the vitriol that would come out. Yeah, of, like if, uh, we were, if, if Canada invaded us, so China came to help mm, us. Mm. Uh, what what uh, what stage are we up to here? Is this before or after? Well, it's just it's like this. Attack. Just a note that the Gulf War was a really big catalyst. So, as when we look at the catalyst, we look at um, the assassination of the king by someone who's Western. We look at um, the Gulf War. We look at the Iranian Revolution, and then we look at his radicalization in Pakistan. And that yeah. really starts to build the background of Bin Laden. And it took a while for the West to really understand this because they could only look at him in a certain way. And when he met with us in 97, I was struck by the fact that he seemed very serious, uh, intelligent, uh, focused, not psychotic. Uh, but my main, my main impression when I met him was that get real. I mean, you're sitting here in this hut in the middle of the night in Afghanistan and you're declaring war against the West. I mean, come on. Uh, how do you implement that? Well, we found out with the embassy bombings in 98, 